Amen. It's good to uh, be here today and uh, good to see all of you today. So I guess we're going to preach uh, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I get to lead off here. And I thought, man, I, I have never done this. I've been preaching 30 years and I've never done this. So I said, I got to see what I'm going to come up with today. So really, I didn't get nothing until this morning. So God's good. Oh, God. Appreciate your pastor and his wife and his daughter. Uh, I, I think they're doing a good job here at Crown Point. Uh, give a big hand, Liam. I want you to always help your pastors. Lift, lift them up. And when they need help, you be there. I've been there, done that, seen all of that, and I can tell people how to do now, and I'll even do the best that I can. I told the Lord a long time ago, just let me be a good Christian, Lord, and I'll be a good one. So I guess that's what he's going to let me do. So uh, just back your pastor and do all that you can for him, and let him know that you're behind him and that you love your pastor, okay? Yes. Amen. Jesus Christ the same here today and forever. Now David said that uh, I was young. He said, but now I'm old. Uh -huh. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed made in bread. And I right. thought about, that's my yesterday. Yes. And that's yes. what I'm preaching on today, you know, that we have to look at where, we, where we're at, what David was talking about, and about his yesterday. He said, and I thought that down through the years, the Lord's been good to this old boy. Amen. I've been living for the Lord since 1976. It's been quite a while. But I thought down through the years, he's certainly been good to me. He's been good to you. And I thought that all of those are my yesterdays. And I thought that time will bring a change in our life. In Psalms, uh, David even tells us that not to be worried about the success of the wicked, but to trust God who has the power to make our dreams come true, David said, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Now when we're walking with Jesus in a surrendered relationship and our hearts have been purified by the word of God, then I want you to know that the desires of our hearts will be godly desires. It'll be things that we want in our life to do to help God, to help the kingdom, and do stuff like that. The desires of your heart is that you can do stuff to further the kingdom of God. In fact, when we're walking in a close relationship, He'll inspire us with dreams and desires that are from Him. Amen. The psalmist teaches us to commit our ways to the Lord, and He will bring righteous desires to pass in His own time. In order for us to realize that dreams have been placed in our hearts, we'll need to exercise faith. Being obedient, being committed to the wisdom and the vision and the dream that we had. Now, Jesus even taught his disciples that they must use and exercise the gifts that God given them or they lose them. Amen. Now, David acknowledged that the Lord would be with us during all of our yesterdays. That he was with us in all of our yesterdays. And I thought from the cradle to the grave. When he said, I've been young, but now I'm old. And I love it where he said, I've never seen this righteous uh, bag for bread or food. I want you to know, when you're a child of God, you won't have to do that. Right. Now, whether we want to admit one thing or not, because of all of our yesterdays, day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, we're growing older. Every day. Yeah. And aging is a reality that many people try to escape in their lives. Truth. That's why sometimes you see older men trying to look young and act like young men. You see older women trying to look and act like young women. They're old, but they try to dress young. They're old, but they try to talk young. They're old, but they try to look young. They're old, but they try to behave like they're young. I learned a long time ago you can't be doing that, man. I thought you walk back, I'd go out and play a little bit of basketball, but I want you to know I'm not 15 or 20 anymore. I'm 60, and that little bit of basketball is a whole lot when you're 60 
So I begin to think about all of my, my yesterdays, and sooner or later, Father Time, Mother Nature, they'll catch up with you, and we'll have to say maybe like the old song says. The old gray man ain't what she used to be. Their yesterdays. It's really a physical impossibility to escape the reality of old age. Aging and old age is a natural progression of life. I don't care how many vitamins you take or how well you watch your diet or how much you exercise, you can't stop yourself from getting old. <laughs> Come on, man. Can't do it. It doesn't how much you exercise your mind or how many natural herbs you swallow or how many books you read on memory retention. Sooner or later, the thought process will deteriorate and you won't be able to remember people's names, people's faces, or you won't even be able to remember why you went into a room. Some of you already done that. Sixty years old, I walk into a room and I say, huh? My wife said, what's wrong? I said, what did I come in here for? <laughs> it, it just happens to we age. So in all of our yesterday, we have to realize that even though we're, we're getting old, God still watches over us. Yes. And I thought about the last couple of years, the last really the six months that I went through, how God had his hand up on me in a mighty, mighty way. He was watching me in all of my Man. Yeah. I told you before that, that, that uh, uh, we don't, men don't want to admit it, but sometimes our testosterone gets low, and when it does, it does things to our mind. So I'd be driving down the road and I'd fall asleep, man. I'd hit a semi, I'd hit a wall, just keep right on going. I was coming down 65 one day, I just nodded off, hit a semi, and I said, ain't no need to stop, we just keep on going. And that's the way it was for a while. You know, I got sick, I got tired, I got weak. Until finally, I went to the doctor and they told me what was wrong. And I thought, in spite of all of my ignorance and all of my yesterdays, God still watches over me. And if God will watch over me, he'll watch over you. In all of my yesterdays, if you just stop to think how many times God has had his hand upon you in your yesterdays. Yes. Yes. He's always been there. Yes. Yes. And I thought, they used to... Call this young man and young lady. But now my kids call me Papa, call her Mama, you know. You used to be able to stay up all night. Now you have to take a nap after church every Sunday. That's, that's your yesterday, man. Who said it? Getting old was fun. And I thought, man, this is the golden years? No. Our hair falls out? Mm -hmm. We can't see. We have to wear a parcel plates and, 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 and stuff like that. I was coming to church one day. I, I've been 10 miles from my house. I told the boy, stop, stop. He said, what's wrong? I said, I'm going back to my house and get my parcel plate. I'm not going to church with no teeth today. Yeah, we come in late that day, but I come in with my teeth. And I thought, man, if sometimes we get old and, and aging, and that's all over yesterday, but we begin to think how good God has been in all of our yesterdays and God will think it through. I want you to know when this thing's over, God's going to see it through every bit of it. I want you to know that God will touch our lives. Amen. You used to be able to eat about anything you wanted to without any fear and any, any indigestion. But now when you eat, you have to stay up a while and let it digest. And you used to never have to take medicine, but now you have to take a pill for everything. I got a bunch of them, man. You got to take a pill to make the pill. You just took go down right. You got to take a pill to put you asleep and another pill to make you up. Things change as you get older and the yesterday begin to add up. But David reminds us of one thing that don't change. And that's God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. And if you look back over your life and you have to realize that God's goodness has been through you and all of your yesterday, you can say without a doubt that God has taken care of all of my yesterday. I thought the places I went, man, I could have been killed. Yeah. But because I was young and, and really dumb and I didn't see any danger in it, uh, 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 God was there in my yesterdays to watch over me. Amen. I remember one night 
we was arguing with some kids on the ground at a ball game, and we would you know how you argue with your kids. I was about 17. And I looked down there one time, this guy had a pistol pointed at me. I said, don't fail me now, ladies and gentlemen, boy. <laughs> Let me tell you, there's been some things in our life that are yesterdays that we got to realize, had it not been for God, we'd be pushing up daisies right now, and I'd be the first one to tell you, if it wasn't God watching my yesterdays, I wouldn't be here today. But because God watched me over my yesterdays, I'm able to see today, and hopefully I'll see what God has for us in the future. I've been young, in other words. God was good to me in my yesterdays. And I thought, man, sometimes the stuff I drink could have killed me. Could have poisoned me. But because I was young and dumb, and everybody else was doing it, I didn't see any danger. But God still had his hand on my yesterdays. I'm telling you, David says, I'm no longer young, but now I'm old. He said, my hair's turned white, my eyesight's gotten dim, my steps have got short, but guess what? God is still keeping me today. And I thought, is there anybody here today that knows for a doubt that not only God's keeping your yesterday, but God's watching yours today. And if you know that God is still keeping you today, then brother, we need to tell somebody, hey, God is still God, and God's still watching over me. Who do you think woke you up this morning? Who do you think got you on your way this morning? And when I checked in the obituary, I didn't see Larry Fugan, and I thought, man, this is going to be a grand old day. And I want you to know, he will take care of your yesterday. My hope says, when I wake up, I look at the obituary, if my name's not there, I know I got it made. I remember a sign the guy had on his locker. It said, any day above ground is a good day. And I thought, I'm gonna close this thing. You may have cancer, but God's good. Amen. You may have a bad heart, but God's good. Amen. You may have high blood pressure, but God is still good. You may be a diabetic, but God is still good. You may be broke and don't have a dime to your name, but listen, God is still God. You may be crying and crippled and cross-eyed, ugly and crazy, but I want you to know that God is still God, and God will watch your yesterday just as well as He'll watch us today and ours tomorrow. God bless you. Colossians 1, 15 and 16, where the Word of God says, Who is the image, speaking of Jesus, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? By Him were all things created, that is in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him, that is Jesus, and for him. Amen. You see, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He had a pre-existence before we can know him as he is today. And I will get to that. And uh, in John, chapter 1, the Gospel of John, it said, the Bible says in verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Who's the Word? Jesus. Amen. And the Word was God. Then in verse 14 it says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. And then in verse 18, it says, No man hath seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father. And He hath declared Him. And then the amplified version of the latter half of that same verse says, 
And he has declared him. He has revealed him. He has brought him out where he can be seen. He has interpreted him. And he has made him known. Amen. Thank God we know Amen. Jesus. Thank God we know the real Jesus. Then uh, the last scripture I want to uh, preface this with is from Philippians uh, chapter 2 and verse 5. Where the Bible declares that chapter 2, verse 5, says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Who thought, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery, to be equal with God. Hallelujah. Now let me stop here for a minute. Let me talk to you. Just look up here. You may have been looking up at the scriptures. But do you realize. The. No, excuse me. Do you realize. That no words. Could describe. The greatness of the Lord Jesus Christ out there in eternity before the world was. Amen. You see, he had an existence. He did not start in a manger in Bethlehem. That's right. You'd be surprised how many Christians see him that way. He's just a babe in the manger, started in Bethlehem. But he was out there. He was the creator. He was the mighty maker of all things. Here he is, not the babe in Bethlehem. He is and was the creator. Mm -hmm. Say he is. He is. Yes. What royal dignity, what unspeakable majesty, what unlimited power, yes. what undescribable glory was his. Uh -huh. yes. But he was willing to put it all aside uh -huh. for you and for me. Yes. He laid aside that majesty, that creative ability, that royalty, mm. that glory, mm -hmm. and that honor. And he descended down into the body of a baby called Jesus. Yes. Of Leaving mm. heaven's glory and the place beside the Father, the bright presence of the Father, and grew up as a man, demonstrated God to man, and then approaches the Garden of Gethsemane. Do you know why he nearly died in the Garden of Gethsemane? Because it was there he had to face the decision that not only had he become a man, but now he had to accept spiritual death in his spirit. To accept all of our sin, all of our sicknesses, yes. all of our curse, our death, and for the first time in all the eternity of eternities, to be separated from the bright presence of the of His Father, yes. Come on, amen. our Father. Yeah, yeah. He is now, since eternity has rolled by, and eternity has rolled by, never has He ever been separated from the bright presence of His Father. But now, He must enter into yes. spiritual death to bear our sins, to be shut off. Yes. From the presence of God. No wonder. No wonder. He cried. If there is any other way. Do it father. Mm -hmm. But there was no other way. Uh -huh. No wonder. The pressure of our sin. Our curse was so heavy upon him. He swept great drops of blood. But he went through with it. Anyhow. And he went down into the regions of the damned. There he went down into the dark infernal regions of Satan. And there he died our spiritual death. And then he arose yeah. victorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And went back to heaven. Praise God. 
and presented His blood to the Father. He did all that for us. Yes. He did that for us and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. That's who He is now. He's seated at the right hand of the Father with all power in yes. heaven and earth. Amen. And thus the Bible says that thou hast given Him a name that is above every name. Yes. That at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. and nothing is too hard for thee. No wonder, Isaiah said, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, but they that wait upon the Lord, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. That's His word. That's my Jesus. That's the real Jesus. That's the one that's empowering me today. That's the one that's renewing my spirit day by day. That Jesus, this Jesus is the mighty God, uh, the everlasting Father, the real, the revelation of the everlasting Father. He is more than a baby in a manger. He is more than a man. He's a mighty Creator, and nothing is too hard for yes. Jesus. There is nothing too hard for this Jesus that I'm talking about. Mm. Amen. Nothing. Yes. I tell you. If you get to gazing upon him and all the problems and all the diseases and all the impossibilities, they become possible. And faith rises up in your heart because you know that he cannot, he cannot fail. Amen. Jesus never fails. He cannot fail. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm thinking of Ronnie Cohen right now. This is a man that lived in Houston, Texas, and he had an accident, and an eye was removed from its socket. It was so damaged they had to remove the eye, and they put a false eye in his socket, uh, a glass eye. And he uh, was had Madonna Osborne laid hands on him in a tent meeting, and she said, Lord, make him see. He has no eye. But if the Lord says, see without an eye, oh, you can yeah. see Hallelujah. without an eye. Yeah. If you have, if your heart is failing and God says to you, you can live without a heart, you will live. Because that's what he said. Amen. God's words are powerful. The words that he speaks, they are of spirit and they are life. Amen. Ronnie Cohen had no eyeball. He would go, and he's, I, I don't know if he still goes around giving his testimony, but I've heard it many times. He will, he will bandage up his good eye, and he will take that glass eye out, and you can put anything in front of him, and he will read it. One minister testified, he says, I've traveled a hundred miles to see that miracle. And when I got there, this Baptist preacher was going to see this miracle. I wanted to be the first one up there. I wasn't, but I got up there. And when I got to, I showed him my, uh, Ronnie Cohen, my driver's license. And he read this Baptist minister's name and uh, driver's license number without a blink of an eye. He didn't even have an eye to blink. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Yes. God, amen. Jesus Christ, the same amen. yesterday, amen. today, and forever. Amen. The one who healed my knee can heal your knee. Yes. The one who healed the woman with the issue of blood in the New Testament can heal your issue of blood. He is the same amen. yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Give him a mighty hand.
Amen. Amen. It is awesome. This is awesome. I tell you, we're a lucky church to have uh, two awesome ministers here that uh, that uh, can preach the gospel. Didn't they do a great job? Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Somebody say yesterday with me. Yesterday. Somebody say today with me. Today. And let's say it together forever. forever. Amen. When I come up and I decided and the Holy Spirit began dealing with me about, about preaching this message, I began wondering, I said, God, uh, uh, how do you want me to put this thing together? And, and, and I gave the, the brother uh, uh, Larry, I gave him yesterday, and then I gave Brother Olson today, and I, I I said, man, I got the easy part forever. And so I began, and I was kind of kind of thinking, man, I've got it made. But then I got to thinking, how can you wrap your mind around forever? And, and I began uh, studying, and I said, God, how can I talk about forever? Because it's something that there's none of us that can, can, can wrap our mind about what forever is. And so I began studying, and I said, I'm going to look at see what Brother Webster has to say about forever. And I got my Webster's Dictionary. It says an interminable time or a limitless time or at all times <coughs> continually always a air eternally everlastingly evermore ever forevermore indelibly, permanent, perpetually. We can't grasp forever, but I'm here to tell you that we serve a God that is the God of forever. Amen. Before that man came about, that God was God. It said in the book of, of Jeremiah, it says, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. Yeah. And before that I sent you forth, or before that you were born, I sent you forth as a prophet that I We serve a God of today, but we also serve a God of, of, of forever. Amen. And God is the God. He's always been. He always will be. He has no beginning. He has no end. We yeah. serve an awesome and wonderful God. Aren't you glad that, you, that we serve a God of forever? Amen. So how do we know about the forever part? I was thinking about how do I know that God will be faithful tomorrow. How am I going to know when I wake up tomorrow? How am I going to know that I've got a God, a God of forever that's going to take care of me tomorrow? And the way that I know that He's going to take care of me tomorrow is, is because that I, I serve a God that is taking care of me yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I learned a long time ago that I needed to trust in the Lord. Yes, I can remember being brought up as a kid, and I remember that we went through some hard times as a young person. We didn't have enough money all the time. We didn't have enough possessions all the time. But I'm here to tell you that we always had food on the table. Yeah. We always had a roof over our head. We always had a God that was faithful. Oh, yeah. We always had a God that took care of us. Come on.
Crops and Daisies is a good day. And so I woke up this morning and I come into the presence of God. And so I know that God not only was faithful yesterday, that I can count and I can see the progression of God's faithfulness throughout my life. But I'm here to tell you today that He's still as faithful today as He was right. yesterday. Yes. I woke yes. up this morning and I woke up in His favor. Amen. 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 That's come on, folks. If you didn't wake up in His favor, there's something wrong there. Amen. You see, we can judge the future because of what God did yesterday. Uh -huh. We can judge the future because of what God's done today. Yes. And so we know that God is going to be uh, going to be there, and He's going to be there forever. Acts one, in verse nine through eleven, it said, "When He had spoken these things, while they beheld, He was taken up with a cloud, and a cloud received Him out of their their sight." And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, so shall so come again in like manner as ye see him go into heaven. I'm here to tell you, we need to stop gazing into the heavens and realize that he's going to be coming back again. God has given us a, an assignment if you will. He's given us a job to do that He has called us to go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that we need to understand that God not only is faithful to us, but there are those outside who, who we have in our grasp that we have an opportunity to reach out to that we need to let them know that God is faithful. Amen. If the one thing I have against a lot of churches, folks, as we stand gazing into the heavens. We love coming together and just worshiping. We love our, our rose-colored stained glass windows. We love our building that we can come into and we can worship. But I'm here to tell you, I've said this many times, the, the church is only a filling station. It's only a place that we come into. We get built up and filled up and, and, and we begin to worship together and all sudden it builds our inside that we might go into all the world and preach the gospel and do the works that God has called us into. Amen. Amen. Yesterday these were men here who seen Jesus in the past. They seen Jesus heal. I better watch it. <laughs> they seen Jesus heal. They seen the past. They seen as the blind eyes open. They seen as the deaf heard. They seen as he performed a miracle. And they were a witness to what he did. They also knew that he was the God of today. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. They seen as he was crucified on the cross. That he was placed in the tomb and on the third day that he rose again. Yeah. So these men that were staring up and they were gazing up and they were watching as Jesus was taking out of their sight, they knew the God of the past. They knew the God of the of the of the, the now. Come on. Mm -hmm. The angel said unto them, Don't gaze up into the heavens. <laughs> this same Jesus. I'm here to tell you, He's coming back again, folks. Yes, he is. He's coming back again. I'm here to tell you that if you listen to the news, I, if you hear the things that's going on, I, they're, they're, I'm waiting for someone to step on the scene, the Antichrist to come in and step on the scene and, and solve the problems of the world. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ, He's here, or He's coming back so soon that we need to be ready. Amen. Forever. First Thessalonians, I'm closing here. Beginning with verse 13. First Thessalonians 4. Beginning with verse 13. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. 
<clears throat> For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you that the word of the Lord which we which are alive. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are also asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. For them which we, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever oh, be with yeah. the Lord. Amen. Wherefore, comfort one another with these yes. words. Folks, he's coming back again. Yes, yes. Yes. Stay yes, with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you come to me now? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, what an awesome day in the presence of the Lord. Yes. What an awesome day to be saved. Yes. What an awesome day to know the God of yesterday. What an awesome day to know the God of today. But I'm here to tell you that there's also a God of forever. There's also a God that's coming back. And He's going to, the Bible says that the clouds are going to break forth. And He's going to come. And that we are going in the twinkling of an eye. That we're going to be caught away to meet Him in the air. But if we're not ready, when He comes back, we will be left behind. You see, we make too much of this thing. Salvation, we make so much of it that, that, that the Bible tells us simply that we are to confess our sins. We're to believe on Him that God has raised Him from the dead. We're to accept Him into our heart. You know that we can't change it. I'm here to tell you, folks, the biggest mistake people make is, is they try to change themselves into something the preacher wants them to be or the church wants them to be. Don't get me wrong, folks. When you get saved, there is a change that will come about, but the Holy Spirit is what changes us. Before I got saved, I was an alcoholic and my wife, I loved my wife and I didn't want my wife to leave me and she said, I'm leaving you, we're done. And I said, honey, I can change. I'll stop drinking and I did for about two to three weeks because I knew she was going to leave me and I, I, I quit partying and I quit doing all the wrong things and I said, see honey, I've changed. About two to three weeks later, I began slipping and getting back in and doing the things that I knew was ruining our marriage. She left me again. And I begged her again, honey, this time I mean it. And I couldn't change. But one day, I got down on my knees and I cried out to God and oh, I said, yeah. God, if you'll take me back again, if you'll forgive me of my sins, yes. I will turn my life over to you. And I got up from that day and no longer did I have the same inside of me. But something had changed. And what I, for years I tried to stop. I tried to beg my wife. I tried to stop doing the wrong things. But I got up from that altar and the smell of that alcohol began to leave me. I found out I didn't need drugs. I found out I didn't need all the junk that was around. I found out that some of my friends that I had were dragging me down, and the Holy Spirit had changed me. Come on, John. Amen. And this morning, I want you to know that you may be looking and saying, I've tried it before and it hasn't worked. Oh, but it will. Hallelujah. And I'm saying turn it over to the Lord this morning. Bow your heads with me. I'm going to ask you this morning Hallelujah. if there's any here this morning that say, Pastor Chuck, I don't know the Lord is my Savior this morning. 
or I might have known him before, but I've walked away from him and I backslid on him, but I want to come home today. I'm here to tell you that he is here waiting. It's no accident that you came to the Crown Point Church of God this morning. You, you may have thought, man, I'm going to come and get some of that deer stroganoff that the pastor cooked up. But God had other plans. God brought you here today that you might know the God of forever. This morning, just with an uplifted hand, is there any that would say, Pastor, I want to know Him this morning. I want to be saved this morning. I want to invite Him into my heart this morning. I want to change this morning. I want that peace this morning. I want to be ready when the eastern sky splits and it comes back. Is there any this morning that will say, will say, Pastor, I want to accept Him as my Savior. Any at all. Any at all this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. I thank you, God, that I can remember my own life, Lord, that you continually knocked at my heart's door until it softened and I came and I answered it, God, and I came back to you, God. And so I pray that if there's any this morning that don't know you, that you would give them another opportunity, Lord, of salvation. Lord, we know that you're coming back soon. Lord, we are ready. And waiting. And Lord, we're ready for forever. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Amen. Before we're dismissed this morning, we're going to pray over the food. Do we have any birthdays, sister?